you either find something unattractive or you don't. Yeah. You, then you should question everything that you feel about everything. Like maybe you don't <laughs> like pizza. Maybe it's all an illusion. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good to hear. We're answering questions today, as evidenced by our setting. Mm-hmm. Shall we get right to it? I think that's the right thing to do. This first question is from Devin. Dear Shandy, first, a little context. I have been dating a guy since January 2020, so just a little over a year. I am 26 and he is 29. He is a military officer and was deployed six months of that time overseas. He is also set to receive new orders this summer, which will likely take him to a new state where I would move with him. I am a full-time musician and teacher, and much of my work is online or can be developed where I live, so it will not be too hard to continue working in a new place. Our relationship has been very smooth sailing for the past year, even during the long deployment, as we were well-matched in temperament, communication style, and mutual goals. I fell for him initially because of his ability to hold deep conversation and use colorful language. Now we are essentially living together and spend most nights together. He has a wonderful character and works very hard to please me in our relationship. However, now that I am seeing his manner of living, I am finding myself more and more unattracted. While I knew he was a gamer from the start, I didn't realize how much he does it. It can take up most of his time from when he returns home from work to when he goes to bed. Additionally, he isn't all that neat and I continually have to ask him to pick up. While he previously intimated that he was into running, he's committing to it less and less. That's kind of funny, actually. (laughs) Nice ruse. (laughs) Sucker. He uses spare moments and downtime during the day to scroll through Reddit often. Is it an overreaction for me to find these habits unattractive? I try to be understanding that his job is extremely demanding and stressful. It's not rare for him to put in 10-hour days, six days a week. Oof. However, the fact that he has no external drive towards self-improvement, whether that be by reading a book, exercise, or a home improvement project is really grating on me. I know that I find it hard to have empathy here because I find my own job extremely fulfilling and it fills the place of a hobby as well as a career, so I don't need an outlet from it to the same degree. I also wonder if these habits particularly grate on me simply because they were shared by my ex who was not the nicest person. He was fairly emotionally abusive. I wonder if the video game playing and personal habits are more of a trigger for me, reminding of my ex. I am wondering if it's normal to go through a phase of disillusionment about a relationship. He really is a great partner in most respects, but I'm finding it hard to get over these things. Thanks, Devin. Hmm. I guess my first question is one of of mathematical origin. (laughs) Yeah? If he... Works 10 hours, six days a week, and the other times he's playing video games. And he's not when sleeping. When is he a good partner? <laughs> <laughs> it's so you to zero in on, but yeah, it's Yeah, I'm true. just trying to think, where are the hours where he's a good partner? Yeah, there's an exaggeration see. happening somewhere, whether somewhere. it's about how much he's playing video games or how long yeah. he's working. I'm curious what's going on when he's not playing video games or working. So okay. do you have thoughts on this? Well, first of all, I don't think she, she should second guess her feelings of on attraction yeah. about these either, two traits. You either find something unattractive or you don't. Yeah. You, then you should question everything that you feel about everything. Like maybe <laughs> you don't like pizza. Maybe it's all an illusion. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's reasonable that she finds that unattractive. And I, I think it's a stretch to suggest that her abusive ex-boyfriend is creating a trigger for those traits. It's like, it, you know, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. Like yeah, it's okay think so. to think that playing video games all night and being really messy is unattractive, especially if you're neat and you don't care for video games. Like you're you're a gamer and you keep it in check big time. Yeah. I mean, I know you probably want to play more than you do, but well, I confess I chose this this question knowing oh, I, <laughs> knowing what the topic. I but. sniffed something of that <laughs> well, nature. I, yeah, I think it would be different if she was finding traits in her new boyfriend that reminded her of her ex boyfriend in terms of personality traits, things that suggested that he too could be emotionally abusive. Sure. But I find the video games sort of generally being messy. I think it's, that's more of a coincidence that, you know, yeah. she's dating guys in a certain age range who most likely play video games and who most likely just aren't that tidy. Yeah, there's a lot. There are a lot of guys out there who play a lot of video games and are messy. Yes. And I don't think they are all abusive y- y- I don't, or yeah. any any other trait. They're just a lot of people like that. Exactly. 
the thing that stood out to me when I first read this email, and it's sticking out again, I was curious to know what direction you would take this in. Mm. So for me, when I play an RPG, for example, that is escapism for me. I want to get lost in another world and... And there are a lot of puzzles. There's a lot of using your mind and solving problems. So, and developing skills that are within that sphere. So, and I know to anyone who doesn't play video games, it can seem like a complete and utter waste of time, but I see it as escapism in the same way that other people see a no reading a novel as escapism mm -hmm. uh, or watching a movie. So I wouldn't necessarily write off his playing video games as just like him wasting his time, especially since it does sound like his job is stressful. However, this sounds like he's playing a lot of video games <laughs> to a borderline disrespectful point. Like you still want to feel like partners and when you come home from work, you want to spend that time together. And even if that's not like sitting and having a conversation, it could be watching a show together or a movie together or playing a game together, a video game together. Yeah. We do that sometimes when we feel like we want to do something. And obviously we're limited right now with our options, but we want to do something that's interactive. We'll play Tetris or some other video game that we can play together. Yeah. Andy particularly likes carnival games. I like games where there's just one button <laughs> that you press and you just time the pressing of yeah. it and there's nothing else. You love the A, yeah, A button just games. A. <laughs> I'm still not even good at them, but it, no, it, it, it doesn't stress me out like pretty some of the Pretty good at bowling. Stuff. Yeah, I'm good at bowling. And good at the, pretty good at the baseball. Yeah, but I, I really... You've gotten I better at that. Wiped yeah. the floor. Okay. We don't have to, <laughs> that, they don't need to know about that. I don't really think it's an overreaction for her to find these habits unattractive. Mm, no. It's kind of, like she said, a period of disillusionment. You but, know, when you live with... This is, it kind of ties into what we talked about in that last Q&A. Like, you never really know a person until you live with them. Yeah. You know, he was like, oh, I, I run all the time. Yeah, I'm yeah. big and I'm running. I run. <laughs> yeah, when you live with I, the person... I run. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm pushing forward on the on the stick. <laughs> on the analog. Is that what it's called? Yeah. It was called a joystick when I was a lad. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, you could feasibly assume your partner runs every day until yeah. you live with them and realize that they don't. Not yeah. that it matters, but... I, I would almost fault her for not finding those two traits unattractive. Yeah, I, there's a few things for me. No, number one, I, I slightly disagree with you about the video games. I agree with you that... Video games can make your problem solving skills better in some ways, but but I don't believe that playing a lot of video games versus reading a lot of books makes you more interesting. I think <laughs> I, th I think we can agree on that. So like if you just played video games your whole life, would you rather sit down and have a five hour drinks and conversation with someone who'd been playing video games for 20 years or someone who had been voraciously reading novels for 20 years? It honestly depends. Oh, God. It, Dep depends. it depends what game system they were playing on. Well, I have bonded with many people over video games that we grew up on. Okay, well, we're, we're going to get off track here. Yeah, and we, we don't really disagree. see eye to eye on this because you're not really into video games. My, and it's not that I'm so into them. I'm, it's just that I see the purpose they serve for someone who wants that sense of escapism and they want to just sort of immerse themselves in another I, world. I... Uh, we'll agree to slightly disagree. I agree, and I also disagree. There's okay. there's two separate entrees there. Okay. <laughs> so, I agree. You're right. It does keep your mind sharp. And it, it well, sort not, of again, that also depends. That depends on the video game, but it also depends on the books. I just think video games get a bad rap. Someone playing video games in their spare time when they could otherwise be reading a novel. It is not. I don't think it's necessarily a waste of time. I'm not saying it's a waste of time. I'm saying if you're doing all of one and none of the other. Exactly. It's That's a problem. the problem. Right. I'm not shitting on video games. Yeah. I think video games definitely have their purpose and are great in many ways. Yeah. And I also love books. And yeah, we both <laughs> love books. That's the issue is everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. If you're everything. playing if you're playing video games all night long and and regardless of whether maybe you're squeezing a little reading in after that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is is too much video games. But that's not the main discussion. The main point is why is it that he is spending all his free time doing something solitary that's not a shared experience with his uh, partner. Yeah. And it's not like all the time he's at home should be that shared experience. But I do think, you know, we had uh, Elizabeth Earnshaw, the family and marriage therapist on, and she talked about just the, the constant like checking in, the turning towards each other thing. Mm. 
um, and they make time for each other. That's what I find kind of alarming here is that it sort of seems like he goes off to work and then when he comes home, that's his, that's like me time for him. Yeah. It's a sign more of like a stagnant relationship. Yes. Not necessarily bad, but not going anywhere. Like yeah. if the guy's working all day, then playing video games all night, I, I doesn't add up that there's a real energy in that relationship. There's a real solid desire to connect and enjoy each other's company. I actually get more complacency. Complacency at the best. So, you know, that the, the video game stuff, I mean, first of all, she should not feel weird about being unattracted to that trait. Number uh -huh. two is... In, in large doses. In large doses, yeah, yeah. And too much in the relationship yes. he's not alone if he's single and playing a bunch of video games he can like, do whatever he wants it's whatever yeah is what it is okay so number one she's in the right to be unattracted to both the messiness and the intense video game playing yeah um there's no problem with that she shouldn't make up some story about it being associated with an abusive ex-boyfriend yeah i don't or girlfriend or anybody so the second thing is he's not um, sharing his time with her the way you should in a good relationship. And number three is she needs to bring this up. She needs to, at some point pretty soon, be like, I don't know if she does both at the same time. Maybe maybe she gets that <laughs> opportunity. It might be a little too heavy. Mm -hmm. It depends on his personality and in, in conflict. But she needs to bring up the fact that he's playing too much video games for her taste and that he's m too messy for her taste. And if and if she can't bring it up delicately, maybe she should find another way to hint that this is not something she's into, mm -hmm. unless she's already hinting and it's not working. And if she's already hinting and it's not working, then she has to just sit down and be like, listen, we gotta talk. I hate it when one partner puts another partner in a position to sort of parent the other, mm -hmm. which often happens. Yeah. Like, I do feel like if she brings it up, multiple times and it's like you're playing too many video games you're not cleaning up after yourself it's like he's forcing her to sort of mother him and nag him but he's the one that's not functioning like a true adult in a partnership well that's it's 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 a double negative you get the downside of these traits that are unattractive and you have to be the parent to yeah. try to put them to sleep mm-hmm uh you know, it's, this reminds me a bit of, we had another question where, I forget who it was, but she, she talked about how when she was at a stoplight with her boyfriend, he chose to scroll through Instagram instead of talking with her. And I think one of them had just been away for a while. Like there was just no connection. Yeah. And she said here, he uses spare moments and downtime during the day to scroll through Reddit. I would love a little more specificity on whether or not that's time that they could be spending together or if that's just part of his work day. I don't know. But there's just a lack of like choosing as the default to come together in those moments. Yeah. Well, I actually I would go as far as saying that it doesn't matter what the thing he's doing is. Yeah. It just so happens to be playing a lot of video games and scrolling Reddit, which I personally believe has on average a negative connotation for many reasons, but we can yeah. agree to disagree, whatever. No, I mean, I, you know how you I feel about Reddit. You could do better things. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Reddit, for sure, we agree on. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm saying is he could be doing anything. He could be coming home and playing a musical instrument all night. Anything. He could paint. He could play a musical instrument. He could build a dollhouse. He could, you know, um, I don't know, write a, a book. Mm -hmm. Anything that doesn't involve her to that extent, when he has a full, long work week, mm -hmm. is, is is a sign that he's not that into spending time with her. I mean, is it, this is not rocket science. No, I, I got to say, I agree. It sounds really harsh, like coming out in words, but that yeah. that is sort of the overall takeaway you get from this is... It's, it goes beyond her not finding those traits attractive. It kind of, to me, reads like him doing these things takes away from them just sort of constantly nurturing their connection. Yeah. And I gather she would be more okay with it if it felt like he was doing it for the self-improvement. Right. It's just there's no, there's no argument you can make that these video games and Reddit scrolling is somehow improving him or the relationship. He just likes Reddit and video games and he likes them more than her, apparently. Are we going that far? I mean, if you're coming home from a, a huge work day yeah, and it's the thing that you're doing all night mm -hmm. and you have 
your partner is sitting there waiting to be engaged with. Yeah. How can you make an argument that you don't like these things more? I, I was, yeah, where are we going? Yeah, to? I, I don't feel great about this situation, but I don't know enough to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down kind mm-hmm. of rating. <laughs> uh, but I will say that a talk is absolutely necessary at this point. Without yes. question, this cannot be slept on. Yes, especially the the cleaning up thing. Yeah, that's because as soon, let's say we're we're way off the mark, and the time that he spends playing video games is not time they would be spending together anyway. Yeah, like then it's like it sounds like he's playing a lot, but that's not affecting her the same way as like him being messy is. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? That's putting it on her to clean up. Start start with the messiness. Yeah. Try to address that. See where that goes and then move on to the video games. Yeah. But it's got to be done of, soon. Yeah, I just think it's sort of like a one thing at a time. They're not the same issue. They're not the same issue, but they both reflect a a lack of respect for her and or the relationship. Uh Devin, this is not this is not an easy one. I do think this is sort of she said a period of disillusionment. I often think that moving in together, there is a period of disillusionment. Every time you move in with a partner, it's very rare that you're not going to be like, well, that's a little. Eh. Yeah. Was there a disillusionment period when we were moved in together? Um, I don't, I don't so. know about disillusionment, but we definitely there are th- things about living together that are inevitably going to be like irritating. Uh, yeah. I mean, like you're annoyed with me, me with putting a glass on a right. pe- on for a, me. It's like I'm a like a neat desk. freak. You're a major neat freak. Yeah. And and you you kind of will berate me if I don't do uh, things. It's very like, light berating. It's more okay. of a hinting. OK, but just the, the cleanliness thing. It's very rare that you're going to be on the exact same page as your partner about how clean and how often to clean and who does what cleaning. Yeah. So this is normal. This is an age old thing. Yeah. It's always one person's messaging and the other person. There has to be somewhere meeting in the middle. This is just the way it is. Yeah. But if there's this other problem, which is much bigger, mm-hmm. and then there's the messiness, too. Now you're now you're getting a little bit of a pile going. I agree. All right. Do you think we answered that? Kind of. I, I mean, it, the, it's, it's, it's it, convoluted. There's multiple layers to this question. There's, there's both a lot of information and not enough information. Completely to make an agree. Assessment. I want to know if the, when he comes home, if they first have a chat and have dinner and do all this stuff and then he plays video games or if he comes home and plays video games until he goes to bed at three in the morning and then wakes up and goes to work. And if that's directly taking from time with her, I'm trying to figure out those details because I think it matters. Yeah, it does. I I think the moral we can take away from this is that if there is very limited free time in a relationship where the two individuals can actually connect and one of the folks is spending all their time doing something, whatever it is, whether it be building a rocket or playing video games. And even if it was reading books, yeah. Or reading books. Yeah. It's taking away from the limited time you have to be in the relationship. And if that's the case, then why are you in a relationship? Is it just a cut? Is it like a safety blanket, like in your house? Like, why are you there? Especially since she said he was. Is there such a thing as a safety blanket? Security blanket. That's all right. Yeah. (laughs) Security. That's the same thing. I was thinking there's no blanket that could give you safety, but it can give you security. It can give you security. Yes. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Um, Especially one more thing. He is a military officer and was deployed six months of that time overseas. Like, you would think that this together time would be, would have novelty to it. Like, oh my God, we get to be together. Let's spend this time together because who knows when I might go away again or have to move or whatever. I just am not getting that sense of like, yay, we're... we're I think there's a problem. uh, I would lean towards there being a problem, but I don't have enough information to give it a full thumbs down. I'm like here. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Maybe even a little bit. Of, maybe maybe there's hope. Yeah. But I think there's going to be there has to be a stiff talking to a like stiff a really talking to. Yes. Yeah. So talking to talk to talk talking to <laughs> him about things bad. All right, Devin. Good luck. This next question is from SL. Dear Shandy, I'm a 27 year old woman and I am terrified that I might be falling for a 21 year old man. In the wise words of Andy, you don't write to a podcast unless you're already in a semi-desperate sleepless nights fueled state of mind needing a reckoning. So here I am. (laughs) That's a great sentence. I like that. Context. 
I have been friends with him for almost a year and a half. We met through a mutual friend and grew to regard each other with the utmost respect and playfulness, much like a younger brother slash older oh, sister dear. kind of dynamic. <laughs> Do you have opinions already? <laughs> I just, I'm reacting. Go ahead. I have recently left an almost year long relationship about two months ago and he stopped seeing someone he was casually dating for three months. We're both in the middle of pursuing our education goals. So we're at similar life stages. Much to both of our surprise and to our friends, despite our different backgrounds and personalities, I'm the cat, he's the golden retriever. We became a lot closer over the past couple of months to the point we are now considering moving in together to resolve our current living situation. I should add with separate bedrooms. I should hope so. Mm. <laughs> We've already discussed how our living spaces will be utilized, rules and boundaries, and most importantly, how to communicate. Since the decision was made, we've both been really excited and talked about all the different ways we can decorate our shared space. He sent me a photo of his cooking skills in anticipation of cooking together and I've already declared we'll be getting a hello tushy. Thanks, Shandy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Another happy customer. Just a couple days ago, while hanging out and having long discussions about anything and everything, we found ourselves practicing self-defense slash MMA moves. Oh, he dear. Was, <laughs> he was, oh, dear. MMA. He was slippery slope. He was showing me how to move my body, and uh, we practiced different attack uh, scenarios yeah, that the required old MMA training. <laughs> nice, smooth. We practiced different attack scenarios that required us to get up close and well yeah, grabby. The rear naked choke. I wasn't sure if I could sense a bit of sexual tension between us until I'm later. Sure. <laughs> Until later that night, we both confessed how we considered romantic notions for each other and that we found each other attractive. Despite that, he immediately and rightfully expressed how nervous he was in pursuing a new relationship so close to moving in together. Neither of us have ever lived with a partner before. And how he was recently evaluating his life and realized how young he is and in the present moment unsure of what he wants in terms of his love life. I remember being 21 and how much I've changed and grown since then. All those years of not being tied down and exploration of your identity, let alone your love life. All of that was invaluable and crucial to who I am today. I'm not sure why, but I can't shake the feeling that if I really did pursue a relationship with him, I'd somehow hold him back. He definitely wants kids someday. I'm not sure I do. He is never short of admirers and is so gregarious. I tend to stay in my corner and prefer solitude. He has his whole 20s ahead of him while I'm about to conclude mine. Intellectually, I know that in any other circumstance, an age gap between older man and younger woman is much more acceptable than an older woman and younger man. Yet, I still feel as the older woman, in comparison to his younger peers, he can find a more suitable, younger woman, therefore a happier and much more successful relationship. I know, I know. I'm getting way ahead of myself and talking as if this age gap is too severe. I'm glad she came in with that paragraph. <laughs> Kind of, she is getting ahead of herself. But when I line up those pros and cons, it feels like I should do what's best and let the possibility go. I'm so fond of him and I just want him to be happy. I want him to experience his 20s freely and I just can't help feeling like I'd be in the way of that. So, dearest Shandy, should I let him go? Um, yes, <laughs> and no more MMA. <laughs> Strictly none. That's a terrible idea. I'm glad she talked about getting ahead of herself because when I read this email, I was like, yeah. chill. <laughs> she's already like, they're buying a house yeah, somewhere. Yeah, she's talking about holding him back. And when she was no, 21, no, no, no. I honestly think the main reason this shouldn't be pursued is because they're about to live together, not because of the oh, age yeah. difference. Well, there's a lot of reasons. Well, they, you know, the age difference, you can explore it. You, you feel that way about each other. No. Why not? See I, how I it disagree. goes. I disagree. I disagree. Yeah, but I'm just saying it doesn't need to be the um, It's not an age difference. It's the age Remember, there's there's exceptions. But even that, to even the that is an experience and a lesson for the both of them. Like they can do it. He's she's 21, she's 27. She's a she's a grown woman. He's a child. Okay. Even it doesn't matter. Forget it. Reverse it. Man, woman, it doesn't matter. At that age, you're a child. Period. Especially you know in in America, right? Right. Twenty one. <laughs> Are you ready to make full adult decisions at 21? Certainly not. But I think a 21 year old can still embark on a healthy and serious and long term relationship. I think they're, she's getting ahead of herself in terms of just seeing this as a relationship that they would both sort of like end up in. 
it sounds like they both sort of ended their relationships pretty recently. This could be a fling. Like you could explore this and discover that, you know, you're not that compatible after all. You could date for a year. you're living together. That's the issue. My issue is the living together, not the age. If you really like someone who's younger than you, you can pursue it. But I definitely think go in realizing that it's less likely that it's going to end well. Yeah, I know. But why would you do that when you're living with somebody? Well, again, that's it. Comes it's back a to no, me. it's a no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I really don't think hooking up with your roommate is a great idea. It's the Even ultimate if it's in, age, per, per, like yeah, age appropriate, that's what I'm whatever. Saying. It doesn't it's not matter. about the ages in this scenario. It's, it's also the, the age. It was the, the age suggests that it's not going to end up well. Yeah. Okay. It's going to end up it, it, at best complicated. <laughs> So why are you doing this knowing that you're going down a slippery slope and you're stuck in the same living situation? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Just just keep the friendship going. Let it go. No more MMA. That's my It's feeling. the ultimate in shitting where you eat. Like, like you said, even if they were age appropriate and on the exact same page, it's still so risky. Yeah. I dated a guy briefly who... I remember he had this roommate who I remember when I met her, I was like, wow, she's like weirdly pretty. <laughs> and I later found out that they did start dating nice. and it was a disaster, Yeah, a disaster. It got really messy. They were on and off again, on and off again, because they lived in the same apartment. And finally they had to move. And it was just a, a nightmare when actually before they got together, they were really harmonious yeah. roommates. I just think it's risky. Yeah, it's risky on many levels, inadvisable on many levels. I, I say hard no. SL, yeah, we're both saying no. I think the age thing is the cherry on top for you, right? Yeah, the age thing closes it like like a safe for yeah. me. <laughs> but without it, I'm very hesitant to advise moving forward. It's funny how her email really revolves around the age but for me, it's really more about them. I didn't even realize together. this was going to become a roommate thing. I thought it was just the age. Same. Until right. she says, yeah, oh, we're going to move in together. It's like, uh, right. I'm already, you know, already with the age. It's like the, the, the prognostics on that are very poor. Mm -hmm. no, Especially no, since he said forward. he's evaluating his life. He realized how young he is. That all sounds to me like. He's kind of letting her down easy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree with you. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm attracted to you too, but no, all these reasons no, why. I, exactly. He's yeah, thinking wisely, actually. Smart. For a, tw a 21 for a child. 21-year-old's on, on point. <laughs> yeah, he is on point. I think that he's right. SL, if this continues on and it's just so powerful that you can't ignore it, sure, give it a go, but I really... I, d I don't think this is yeah. worth pursuing now. I mean, it makes it gives me such joy that uh, they're both going to have such uh, happier buttholes. That's the <laughs> that's the thing I take away. All right, SL. Obviously, do do what feels right, but oof, I try to avoid shitting where you eat in life in general. But if you it do shit rude. where you eat, use a hello tushy. <laughs> mm. Nice, nice. All right, let's move on. This next question is from Alana. Dear Shandy, I'm a 30-year-old female living in a suburban small city area. I met a 27-year-old guy on Hinge and just ran into an incredibly frustrating situation. We had been talking back and forth for about a week on Hinge when he asked me if I would like to go on a date. We had good banter before he asked me out and I felt like things were going well and was actually very excited to meet him. He was showing a lot of interest and had great date ideas. First, he suggested going ice skating, but I pointed out the rink was closed. He then came up with the idea to go to a nature center where they have farm animals and trails. This is an amazing date idea for me, and I have to say I got attached. We had planned on going to the nature center this weekend, but didn't set exact details. I messaged him yesterday morning asking if Saturday worked for him and expressing that I was looking forward to our date. He responded saying that Saturday at noon worked and even added on a plan that maybe we could get coffee after to debrief our nature experience. <laughs> I went to answer his message around noon and the message thread was gone. It was totally gone. We have not yet exchanged numbers, so that was my only way to get in contact. 
I quickly Googled the situation and apparently it's called cloaking. When you block someone on the app and therefore become invisible to the other person, like an invisibility cloak. I am pretty sure this is what happened and it's made me so frustrated and angry. My friend, who knows she is likely being overly optimistic, thinks that this could be a glitch because who makes a solid plan and then disappears? I'm feeling a lot of rage over this. <laughs> and she sounds like me. That's something I would say. I'm feeling a lot of rage over this. <laughs> that is very Charlene. I did find him on Facebook and I'm so tempted to reach out to him just to hold him accountable for this incredibly rude behavior. Should I reach out? If I do, do I give him the benefit of the doubt that we somehow got disconnected? Or do I confront him about this? What kind of person is so forward about making plans like this and then disappears? I know I should just move on and it was better to find out that he would bail before a date than after. But the temptation to message him is there, especially since I know I'll never meet him in person at this point. Please help. <sighs> I think we're so predictable. It's so obvious what we're going to say to this. It's like... Alana, a, don't do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could go around in circles wondering why someone does something like this. I just think that the odds of you getting an answer that's going to satisfy your curiosity and rage are super slim. Yeah, she's basically... There's a 90% chance her confidence is going to take a little bit of a hit. Oh, you think so? No, I'm saying there's two possibilities. One is... Like it was a glitch. Yeah. And that's very unlikely. It Let's wasn't be a honest. Glitch. There's no glitch. Yeah. 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 That friend is indeed overly optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, who knows? There's a very out, there's a slight chance. So let's let's give it possibility. But there's a very good chance that her reaching out is going to negatively impact her confidence just by the act of it and the probable um, response, which is going to be either no response or mm. like, oh, yeah, sorry, I, I just I met someone else or something. You know, the vibe I'm getting is that he was like the boyfriend and that with caller Stephanie. Remember when she discovered her, his oh, dating yeah, profile yeah, alive yeah. and well when they were dating? Yeah. I feel like he was caught or something like he suddenly, sh I don't know, shut it down. I don't know what's going or on. Or he's there. just like like his as a fetish of like making plans with girls and then not <laughs> and then disappearing. I mean, as far as fetishes go, that's a pretty benign one. So it's also pretty high level psychopath. <laughs> yes. So in interesting, interestingly harmless psychopathic behavior. But I think that um, she needs to just move on. Yeah, I understand feeling just rage and wanting an explanation and feeling like demanding it will put him in his place or something, but I don't really think it's going to give her the result that she wants out of this. It's going to end up making her come off sore about it when really she should just sort of walk away with her head held but it's high. It's confidence. It's always you're, 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 you're selling your confidence anytime you do something like that. Yeah. It's, that's the currency you're spending. Oh, that's a nice way of putting it. I, I agree with that. Demanding something of someone who is still technically a stranger. Nothing yeah. was set in stone. Yes, it's bizarre and shitty to not even give an explanation, not even a fake explanation. It's just cowardly. And like she should take the hint that like yes. not only is this guy not interested for whatever reason. I mean, it's the Internet. He probably had like 20 conversations going on at the same time. Yeah. And someone he wanted to see more ended up working out. So that's number one. But number two is. If he is not man enough to reach out to her <laughs> yeah. to fix this situation, yeah. then what does she care? She's done. It's over. Mm -hmm. Just let it go. Yeah. I don't want that. It's very strange behavior and, and yeah. definitely is. Talk about early red flags, which we yeah. sort of circle back to every single time on these Q&As. Oh, it's like, that's not a yellow flag. That's a full-blown red flag. Red flag. And yeah. I mean, of course it hurts and it's, it's angering. It's mm -hmm. annoying. Yeah, of course. But you got a gift in the sense that you don't have to waste any time with this person. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Like, and it never should have started. Yeah. And, and, and it's the internet. So don't be too, don't be too angry or too upset. Everybody's juggling a hundred different conversations on these dating apps at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like they don't take anything personal. It's yes. like, it's business basically. Yeah. Yeah. You do get the sense that she's taking this a little personally and she admits she got attached because it was such a great date idea that yeah. really suited her. But ultimately I said this before in another Q and a until you meet your strangers, they don't owe each other anything. Yeah. He doesn't, Technically, I think it's rude, but he doesn't really owe her an explanation. And she certainly doesn't owe him a lesson in no. how to treat 
people no, online. There was not enough enough establishment there. Yes. But also, I think that it's like almost a rite of passage. Like almost everyone who spends a lot of time on dating apps eventually runs into this situation. Totally. So don't nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. Don't take it too personally. Yeah. Goodbye. Like this never happened. Move yeah. on with your life. Yeah. Alana, Shandy thinks double thumbs down. Double thumbs down. On and, and also reaching out on Facebook, especially because then you, by reaching out on Facebook, you're revealing that he affected you enough to seek him out. For me, I just don't want to give the person that satisfaction when they've clearly treated me so dismissively. Yeah. Well, you're you going to reveal that he affected you enough to stalk him. It's not about him. It's about you. It's about you maintain your dignity. It's very important. You got to maintain and dignity. Con- and, and I like the it's confidence. confidence, dignity. Same thing. You just have to watch out about spending, as I was saying, the currency yeah. of your confidence. Yeah. Not, not a good thing to play with. Not to mention the time and energy. Yeah. And, and also, um, just one little note. It's, it was three years younger than her, I'm just saying. <laughs> just, I well, I mean, I, I, that definitely plays a role here. Yeah, a little bit. Not the age difference, but just the fact that he's 27. He's 27. I no, no. He's nine years until he's a he's a man. <laughs> All right, Alana. Good yeah. luck. All right. This next question is half question, half follow up, and it is from Zach. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> We've been very excited about this. I know Zach. And Andy is completely in the dark. He doesn't know anything about this question. I do not. Follow up. So I, I confirm this. So for anyone who missed the last Q&A, Zach wrote in with a very vague one paragraph question uh, where he mentioned his girlfriend indulged a sexual fetish of his. And then he conspicuously was missing the actual sexual fetish. There wasn't enough context for us to give a really (laughs) fully fleshed out response. But there are way more details now. He delivered. There are multiple paragraphs. (laughs) Hi again. Loved your responses and sorry for being so vague. I didn't know if I if giving too many lewd details would kill my chances of getting on the show. <laughs> Basically, I really am out of my comfort zone here, but I suppose it's part of growth to just own this stuff, albeit anonymously. So my indulgence goes as follows. A couple of happy years into the relationship, we were texting and she mentioned that her ex-boyfriend was bigger than me. And out of nowhere, I got a raging hard on. Wait, bigger in what do you think? overall size? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so naive. Yeah, of course it's bigger than that. Okay, got Wait, it. Wait, what did you think it would be? Just a bigger person. Oh, no. Yeah. That's so sweet that you. Wow. I just thought. I thought you know, one of why is because our podcast doesn't is usually kind of PG-13. We don't yeah. get people talking about penis size. It's true. This is the first time. Oh, my God. And it took f- a guy. <laughs> of course it's a guy. But this is the first time in our whole podcast anything has come up about penis size. I well, feel we've, like made, we've made like crude remarks, but yeah, no one has written in and been, I don't and said even something recall. Like if, if there was a crude remark made, it was by me, and I don't recall making one about penis size. Let's just so enjoy let's agree, this moment. Let's agree that this topic has not been indulged. No, at all. No. And OK, congratulations to Zach for, for bringing us up up yeah. a, of a level. He's delivering. Yeah. So she mentioned that her ex-boyfriend was bigger than me. And out of nowhere, I got a raging hard on and was so overwhelmed. I had to go to the go to the train bathroom to. Mm, oh, and wow. he has an eggplant emoji. Train bathroom. It was so. <laughs> Ooh, I love that that's a, what you're focusing on. I mean, that is a real, I mean, that's a desperation move. He must have been yeah, really He was torn. really turned on. Yeah. It was so strange. I thought about what had happened and eventually followed up very cautiously and ended up just telling her that hearing her be mean slash critical slash ridicule slash compare me, etc. seemed to really turn me on. This turned into a mainstay of our relationship as she knew it was a very easy button to press to turn me on and make me finish, whatever. I then later also discovered that hearing about her experiences with other guys in her past turned me on. Eventually, this turned into some hot wifing where she'd sleep with other guys and tell me about it. Wow. So he's basically a cuckold. Yeah. As I started to realize that our sex life was dwindling. Do you want to comment on that at all? So basically, she's getting her fill with other guys based on his fetish. Yeah. And she's no longer having sex with him. Well, we'll get to that. But isn't that in itself turn him on more? (laughs) 
<laughs> that should be the ultimate turn on is that she's only having sex with other guys. Oh, this, this gets we'll complicated. We all have bigger penises. <laughs> As I started to realize that our sex life was dwindling, we were also both looking for jobs out of university and figuring out what was going on in life. So it was a stressful time, which I thought explained it. Then COVID came and we turned into each other's mental well-being support more than before and things didn't get better in the bedroom. I think the loneliness of COVID has kept me going till now, but I'm realizing now we've discussed all this, that she looks at me differently because she spent years being mean slash demeaning, et cetera, to me, that she's kind of convinced herself it's true. Mm. Then add in the fact that she slept with a few guys who she had great fun with. I mean, this is getting really juicy. Yeah. I'm into this. I want more Zach's, questions like Zach's this. Zach's delivering. Yes. Zach, you are pulling through. You are making up for that last question. Mm -hmm. I feel I feel bad that we shamed him into giving us such juicy tidbits. <laughs> we did shame him. Yeah. To clarify, there was no judgment on her side. She was always willing to indulge me and let me explore, but it ended up changing her sexual perspective because she indulged me over the course of a couple years. We're really close. We love each other. There's the desire to work on things and undo the psychological impact this whole experience has had. But I just don't know when you should stop fighting for a good thing. Also, to make things more difficult, any rekindling we do will have to be long distance as she's moving three hours away very soon. Oof, that's like a whole other... I mean, three hours isn't the end of the world, but it's sort of like another. Yeah, it is the end of the world when you're banging all sorts of guys everywhere and you're not having sex with your partner. <laughs> it might as well be a thousand miles away. I'm still in love with her and I would love to be with her long term, but I'm a young guy, very confident and comfortable with girls. So I don't know if I should just start fresh with someone new. In short, how many obstacles are too many obstacles? This is a great, great, great example of how specificity and details completely transform a question. Completely. This is a completely different question. Yep. And I stand by the answer we had to the first question based on what we were told. Yes, I agree. But now it's different. She indulged him for several years. She was into it. Based on that other email, it seemed like she let him pee on her or something and she That's wasn't what I into that. Too. That's what I thought. For some reason, I was sure there was peeing yeah. involved. <laughs> I was I tell it was, I thought it was peeing. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, if I thought it too, there must be a reason. He's into cuckolding, which yeah. is respectable. But he, the cuckold bit him back. The cuckold, it came around and bit him in the ass. That's rough. To me, the big takeaway here is like the dangers of not separating fantasy from reality. Like, I think it's really important that fetishes remain this like fantastical, otherworldly, like you, you're playing characters. You know, me getting turned on by you demeaning me doesn't mean that you should see me that way in real life. And I think it's important for both partners to realize that. You're, you're so right. It, yeah, it has to be. It's like playing a video game. It's like separate from real life. Yeah, this completely. is this is you're going to go to a special place doing role play. Yeah, you're not these people. Right. It's really important because in this case, I think it's chipped away at her respect for him, yeah. which once that respect is gone, I've said this before. I don't I personally don't think you can get that back. I agree. She fully bought into the fantasy. Yes. I'm not fully blaming her. This happens, you know, that she wasn't ready for this, but it's it's kind of a betrayal because he basically gave her the keys. He was like, here, this is the thing I like and you can go do this. And she's been having great fun. What, I mean, what a sweet deal for her. She it's gets to go have deal. sex with other guys. Yeah, she really. I and mean, the better it is, the more turned on he is. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, this is a no lose for her. Yeah. The problem is, is now the relationship might be bust. The relationship um, is bust. It's bust, yeah. This is a busted relationship. It, Sorry, Zach. But I don't know. The thing is, this is the thing. Someone, so, I don't think Zach should blame himself for this. Because no, I, I don't think he should blame himself but, at but all. But not, not just blame himself for how it turned out because of his actions, but not blame himself because it probably would have ended up sour anyway. It's hard for me to believe that just this fetish exploration resulted mm. in the relationship ending. I think there was a problem. I think she would have acted differently had she really been invested in it, had she really deeply loved him and wanted to preserve this. She would have acted differently. She may have said like either, you know what? I know me 
and like this might get a lot of control. I want to preserve this. I just let's keep this really like sort of figurative, mm-hmm. not so literal. Or once she started having like, you know, sex with other guys and feeling like, oh, this is kind of fun. She should have put the brakes on and been like, listen, this like I really love you and I want to preserve this. And this is this is getting a little I'm kind of like liking this. And I think that's dangerous. So the fact that she kind of just let it run away with her, itself without ever checking it, I feel like there was the seed of discord somewhere down there that was going to come out anyway, even without any of this happening Mm -hmm. personally. So I don't think he should blame himself, number one, for the fetish causing the disruption, Mm -hmm. and number two, for there being a disruption at all. I don't think he should blame himself for the relationship ending in any way, because I think, and I'm assuming it's going to end. I'm I'm assuming. Yeah. I think it's over. Sounds over (laughs) to me. I stand by, he should not blame himself for any of this at all. For what it's worth, I don't think he is. Like, I think he, that's why I actually think that he's got a good amount of self-respect where he's like, oh, wait a minute. Right. You can't not respect me anymore in real life. That That's not cool. So the irony is, is that he may be actually in control of the direction of the relationship, despite the fact that he's <laughs> completely given over this fantastical control to her. Yeah. Um, but I do think that, I mean, he's probably going to end it. I think he's probably for his own dignity and self-respect. He's probably going to end the relationship. And um, I think that's the right thing to do. And I think in the future, he should just tread a little more carefully, maybe create some more solid ground rules if he wants to continue down that fetish highway. So I agree with you in that this was always going to happen in some way, shape or form. Like we always talk about how many relationships don't end up with a happily ever after. You talk about the corpses that no. lead to your final relationship or whatever. They're yeah. so young. She's 24, he's 25, yeah. if we recall from the last yeah, time. Yeah. This relationship ran its course. It's certainly, I think, a lesson learned for both of them. But I also think that with someone else, this wouldn't have happened. You know, like he could easily engage in another relationship where the woman also was as into it as this girlfriend was, maybe he could find someone who feels the same way and you have a a bi-cuckled scenario. (laughs) That's ideal because then they can do it to each other. Oh, I totally agree with you. I just think that he's so young and there's so many, like the world is his oyster. Yeah. He's so, he seems intelligent and well-spoken. He knows what he has going for him. I think it's so great that he didn't let that line be blurred. Yeah which is sort of like, oh, I'm turned on by that. Oh, but I'm also kind of feeling demeaned when it's not a sexual situation, but kind of accepting that. I, I have mad respect for, for that, for the fact that he's sort of kept his wits about him because I can see how that would get confusing. If you're really turned on by something, and it, but you're, it's sort of hard to know exactly when that's bleeding into your non-sex life relationship. A hundred percent. And I think that this was a great learning experience for him, both learning about himself, learning about how this operates in a relationship and learning about how he would do it going forward. And he's young enough to have experienced all this stuff failed Mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes, which is nothing wrong with failure in relationships, especially at that age. Mm -hmm. Um, So as you said, the world is now his oyster. He's got this secret. Yeah. It's a very, (laughs) very... Many possibilities. There are many open. possibilities. Yeah. Shandy respects your fetish. Oh, it's a solid exactly. fetish. Yeah. I thought it was just like some golden shower thing. That's, that's not that there's hour. anything wrong with that. Oh, no. I'm not judging all, golden showers. All fetishes are, are welcome at Dear Shandy. But oh, yeah. I think this is a particularly high level fetish, especially for a 25 year old. Yeah. This guy's way like he's, he's ahead of his time. He's, 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 he's an, an astronaut. He's an astronaut. He's an astronaut. That's what he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's clear how we feel about this. In short, how many obstacles are too many obstacles? I think this is too many obstacles. I think that when your partner, for whatever reason, stops respecting you and confuses what's okay in your sex life for for being okay in in your real life, that's a line that that has been crossed. And I don't think the respect can be no. found. She, she, she's trampled all over a, a, a kind of a, almost a gift he was giving her. Yeah, it was a gift. Uh, yeah. Uh, multiple gifts. Yeah. <laughs> but I do, I, I would add one point is that I think that he has to, after this relationship goes its merry way, which is, I'm assuming, 
he has to ask himself, how important is this fetish to him in his future relationships? And if it's really something he cannot live without, which is totally fine. I think he needs Nor should to, I think he should have to. It is not going to be hard to find someone who's okay with this fetish. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I was about to say is I think he needs to bring this up early on in the courtship phase. Like, I think he, he has to say I don't like, know about that early on, not like the first date. Oh, although that would be helpful. I, I mean, think he the, should feel it out. Yeah. At uh, the end of the day, there are people who would be like, Oh, at this fetish. Yeah, but what I'm saying, my point is, is that if he can't live without this fetish being explored in a relationship, which is totally fine, he needs to bring it up fairly soon with prospective partners. We can't forget the main thing we focused on last time. It's sort of easy to forget because this has different information, but their sex life was hurting for 18 months. We kept focusing on that. That's a very long time. Yeah. It's a long ass time yeah. to not be having sex or to having issues with intimacy. It's clear to everyone, I think, that this is over. And you can tell from his emails. This final paragraph, how many obstacles are too many obstacles? When should you stop fighting for a good thing? In general, I do think if you're asking yourself those questions, you can tell that he's, this is him letting it go. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's cleansing himself. He's written, this, this is just a, an epitaph. It is. For the relationship. <laughs> this is his epitaph. Yeah. It is. Here lies my failed cuckolding attempt. Yeah. And actually, this is a pretty clear cut reason to end it, I think. You know, sometimes it's harder to end a five year relationship, especially when you don't have some sort of catalyst. In this case, he does. The, the, pro the, the problem I think he may ha be having, and I kind of joked about it earlier, but it may be serious, is that it's turning him on more that she's. she's He's sort of denying him sex and having sex with these other so? guys. I think he's, he's probably really struggling. I think one of the reasons why it dragged on as long as it did is was he's struggling with that turn on, which it's so extreme now. He's basically living an actual cuckold. Yeah. And I, again, I have so much respect for him that he recognizes the difference because someone with a lesser self-esteem... That's why I'm not a big fan of the girlfriend. In this I situation. think that she sucks. She, she, sucks. she betrayed him. She betrayed like it's like a rule. It's like a rules of engagement. It's like there's like the Geneva Convention. Uh -huh. The Geneva Convention is like basically a set of rules that you have to obey in war. OK. Like you're not allowed to use chemical weapons. OK. You're not allowed to torture prisoners. OK. All this stuff. Yeah. You know, if a guy surrenders, you're not allowed to shoot him. Yeah. You know, all this is Geneva, Geneva Convention. She betrayed the Geneva Convention of relationships yeah of this relationship and of these terms yeah i think i like zach i think i have a feeling zach's a very cool guy I like agree. i'm down with zach and i think that he, he was too much of a human in this situation he should have been able to just say you know what you've disrespected the situation this is over he's a nice guy he seems like a really nice guy. Or he's been confused by his and turn he's on. he's super confused. <laughs> I feel really bad. It's like it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. There's like no escape. It's like the worse it gets, the better it gets. Yeah. And I, I do think that you're right. She she, she betrayed him in this. Yeah. Geneva Because it, it's to me, it's clear that what happens in the bedroom kind of stays in the bedroom. Not in terms of secrecy, but in terms of just the roles you play yeah. and how you disrespect each other for the sake of getting your rocks off. You called her behavior last time juvenile, and that was with very little information, but I actually think that still applies. I agree. I actually think our advice from the first time applies entirely. It's just sort of at a different perspective. Yeah, she was more of a leading role in this than I think we thought. She's way more of a villain. If, yes. Yeah. You're right. Because before it seemed like she, it kind of seemed like maybe she got coerced into doing something That's that she what didn't want to do. Yeah. That's or what like I thought. she was in the word indulge kind of suggests that like she's doing it solely for him. But now that we know what the fetish is and what she's been up to oh, for it's years. So it's exactly <laughs> opposite. I thought she was doing something that was humiliating her or had humiliated her to the point where it just never went away. She could never clean it. Yeah. But instead, she's out fucking banging half of the town, <laughs> having a great time Yeah, and she, denying him. Yeah, she is more of a villain now that we know more information. Villain. And we weren't a fan the first time around. 
Zach, the, the, I, I do just, what you will with I, this. I just warned Zach, don't date another girl who's going to abuse this situation. You got to be careful because this is, it plays on your biggest weakness. You are turned on by her bad behavior. And that's why I think the ideal is that he finds a fellow cuckold. Yeah. And I think the topic should be brought up kind of early in the courtship process. Just, just to, to avoid, see. you know, any surprises down the road. I mean, reasonably. I don't early. think it's, it's the first no. thing they start discussing on their first date. But I think maybe if there's a kind of opportune moment, slide oh, so it in there. <laughs> and no pun intended. <laughs> to just, try and get on the same page. Yeah. And see if she's also into that. Yeah. Because I get the feeling that this is not something that he can just bury and forget about. I think this is something that he's going to. Nor have, should he have to. No, no, he shouldn't have he's to. He's not going to have a hard time with this fetish in life. I think it's a lot harder, I think, the other way around. Yeah. Like, if you're the one that wants oh, yeah. and it's to also demean your partner by going and sleeping around, like, good good luck with that. Yeah. It's <laughs> also like, oh, wow, real creative. You know, it's just selfish. Yeah, I think he's going to have an okay time with it. I think actually most people are going to be like, are you joking? And then he's like, no. And they're like, sweet. sweet. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> All right, Zach. Shandy uh, appreciates your candor and your Very follow-up. much so. He really stepped yeah, up. He really did. N and I would say now he's, he's one of our favorites. I feel like if I had a guess, I know I think Zach is, Zach is European. Do you want me to tell you? I think he's, I think Zach is from the UK. He did say university, which kind of tipped me off, but I just say his, there's a certain way about him that just seems very not American. Am I right? Well, at the end of the email, he says, hope this clears things up. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Also, just by the way, I'm based in the UK. So thumbs up on your international reach. So you were right. All right, Zach, mad respect. Shandy. We're, we're fans of Zach. Uh, I know I'm a fan. He really delivered. He stepped up after we, we complained about men and their weak, vague, short emails. He's a maverick. He's an intrepid <laughs> explorer. Of He's an astronaut, I believe I call yeah, him. He's, he's all a, of those things. He's a, he's a great man. He's a great hero. A great, great British legend. <laughs> Zach. <laughs> All right, Zach, do what you will with these opinions. I think it's pretty clear how we feel. Mm. Good luck. This next question is signed Guilty Fake Bachelorette. Dear Shandy, I love and appreciate that you've started this channel because your suggestions and advice have a perfect balance of being practical and empathetic. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Our channel. I like that she called it a channel. Yeah, a show, a channel. A channel. Opposite to Caroline's episode... So Caroline was episode two, Ooh, going all the way back, where, wow. she, where she was dating a guy who was dating multiple people. What are your thoughts on rotational dating from a woman's perspective? Or is it a gender neutral problem? I'm, or, and she put problem in quotes. Gender neutral problem. Scenario. I'm 28, female, and live in San Francisco. I'm dating online using Hinge. And as we know, with the landscape, it's safe to assume that both sides are dating multiple people. I've been on about four to five dates, each with four guys. Ultimately, I want a long-term relationship with the person I feel the strongest connection with. San Francisco is a dense but small city, so I've been transparent about this with three of the guys, aged 28 to 31. And weirdly enough, this makes them chase me more <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't told my favorite guy, who's 34, yet. I'm nervous telling him might turn him off because he told me he is looking for a serious relationship but wants to take his time since he recently moved into the city. He was also honest about going on a date with another girl before we met. She asked him out. He told her he didn't feel any chemistry and didn't continue seeing her, but hasn't explicitly said he wanted to be exclusive with me either. Me yet either. Should I tell him? What if he sees me on a date with one of the other guys? Warmly, guilty fake bachelorette. So to be clear, the question here isn't about whether or not it's wrong to date multiple people. It's whether or not she should tell her favorite guy, guy number four out of four, she's already told one through three, that she is seeing other people. I don't think she has to. I, uh, I don't even You know have like what... no opinion on this, I can tell. <laughs> You're just like, what's the issue? Uh, yeah, like don't tell him. I mean, tell him if you want to. 
Yeah, tell him if you would want to be told if he was, it sounds like he's telling you about other dates he's going how on. Long, how far along is she with this guy? She says she's gone on about four to five dates with each of the four guys. I mean, I don't think you owe anyone that explanation until things are getting pretty serious, personally. I mean... I mean, I'm, ta I'm talking with today's dating climate. Yeah, four or five... Some people might be offended by that opinion. The, yeah, the one thing I would say is four or five dates for one person is not the same for, as for another person. One, yeah. one could be like, you're still like, you know, going out for dinners and maybe having a kiss at the end of the night. And the other ones, you've already slept together and like stayed over like a couple times. Yeah. And talked about your deepest, darkest secrets. So I don't know what kind of four or five dates this is. Mm -hmm. It comes down to are you sleeping with multiple guys then, or guys are sleeping with multiple girls. Then it becomes a little more of an issue, I think. Yeah, it kind of comes down to, I guess, what would you want to be told? That's treat a good others, way to look at it. Yeah, treat others how you would want to be treated. I know that if I were dating a guy, I would want to know if he was dating and certainly sleeping with other people. Just because like the information tells me something. Mm -hmm. I think in the early stages of online dating, personally, it's a hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil That's situation. the early stages. Early stages. It's like people in the early stages, really deep down, they really don't want to know. And you shouldn't have to tell other people. You're still, it's an interview yeah, process. Yeah, and God knows guys take advantage of that. Like yeah. Most guys, I think, don't tell unless specifically asked. Yeah. I so think I don't think she should feel too guilty about being a bachelor There should be zero guilt. Right <laughs> yeah. There should be zero guilt unless, unless she's leading this guy on and being like, listen, I really love you. I think you're the, the guy for me. Like, I want to. No, I but she says he's her favorite. But what does that mean? Does he know he's her favorite? Well, she's worried about turning him off. Like, I get that she's kind of a little more nervous about him. What I find interesting is that she is still dating the other three guys, given she seems kind of lukewarm about it. It doesn't make sense to me. What doesn't add up to me is that she's so worried about telling him that she's dating other guys. Why is not she just stop dating other guys and try to focus on this guy? And if it doesn't work out, go back to dating other guys. Yeah. But I think she's also afraid of sort of being left hanging. He says he's looking for a serious relationship, but wants to take his time. I actually think that she, if she wanted to you know, sort of speed things along with her favorite guy, she almost should tell him because history has shown the three out of three of the other guys, it makes them chase her more when yeah. she tells them. <laughs> this is I true. mean, men are predictable, if nothing else. Yeah. Guilty fake bachelorette. I don't think there's really a, a wrong answer here, honestly. I do think there's, a, there's a, sort of like a sprinkling of different thoughts. One is... If you were dating someone who was dating three, four other people and doing with those people what you're doing with each of these guys, would you want to know? It's sort of like just doing, you know, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. That being said, she owes no explanation. Yes, I completely agree. I don't, I'm not trying to confuse the two. Yeah. I don't think she owes anyone anything, especially since I think most guys in her position keep that to themselves for as long as they can. Yeah, I think there will come a point where nature will take its course. There's going to come a point where it becomes obvious that this has to be a discussion. And yes. At that point, you should have it. As soon as it becomes like clear that this is going to be needed to be addressed, mm -hmm. just talk about it. Yeah, I think this is a very mild issue. Yeah, I, I would not stress about it, though. This is not she's. To, this is a, to, it's all fair in love and war and it's even more all fair in in love on the interwebs yes and she says what if he sees me on a date with one of the other guys nope. if it's right that's no. not gonna turn him off oh i i would i would say quite the contrary huh you think that's going to turn him off to see? No, him? I would say uh, that's sorry. I, that didn't come off right. <laughs> I would go a step further and say that in most cases that will probably make him more. I think it'll light a fire under his yeah. ass. Men are predictable. Very predictable. And that department super, super predictable. predictable. For every nine guys that are turned on by that or or more motivated, engendered by that, yeah. there's one that's annoying. It's like, oh, I won't stand for that. <laughs> That is his voice. Yeah, I won't stand for this. <laughs> All right, guilty fake bachelorette. You heard our thoughts. Good luck. Yeah. Yep. Chill out. <laughs> chill out? Just chill out. It's fine. You think she should relax a bit? Just relax. Don't worry about this. You know what's interesting about this is it goes to show how different we are when we really, really like someone. Like we are a little more worried about doing things wrong. Like 
She didn't write an email about telling the other three guys that she was dating other people. But her fourth and favorite guy, she's like, oh, I don't want to turn him off. It just goes to show like how we categorize things differently in our mind. She's done it three times. Yeah. It's interesting. It's true. Yeah. But I understand the thought process. Sure. Like she, I gather that if one of the other guys had an issue with that, she would have been like, okay, bye. <laughs> she's thinking about these things. She wants to be a good person. Wants to do the right thing. She's yeah. She wants to be uh, transparent, which I I wonder how many guys would write into a podcast with the same concern. Zero. Zero. <sighs> All right, guilty fake bachelorette. Good luck. All right. This next question is from Nikki. Dear Shandy, love the show. You two have a great flow and are so compassionate to your callers and writers, even when delivering hard to hear advice. I have to admit, when I first saw a love fest notification, I groaned, (laughs) thinking it would all be gushy goo. But you ask such great questions. You get to the heart of what makes each couple work, and it's fun to hear their stories. Oh, that's Mm, so nice. Very nice. Thank you, Nikki. Maybe we should have named love fests differently. (laughs) They do sound pretty groany. (laughs) Yeah, but it's kind of wink, wink. It is a little wink, wink. Yeah. There is one silly issue I'd like to get your opinion on. I've been married to the same person for nearly 30 years. And for every one of those nearly 30 years, he's given me a bouquet of red roses on our anniversary, (laughs) Valentine's Day, my birthday, and Mother's Day once I had babies. Is your whole, like, house just filled with with red roses roses. all the time? (laughs) Like dead red roses. So sweet, right? But here's the thing. I don't like red roses. (sighs) They smell bad, and they die fast, and they're just so cheesy. (laughs) Plus, they're too sophisticated for me. She's (laughs) right. You also don't like red roses. So silly. Do you know red roses are actually, I am sure most people have heard this, but red roses are supposed to only be given for condolences. Really? Yeah, like funerals. Are you sure about that? It's true. You're supposed to give like white roses or, yeah, right. (laughs) Plus, they're too sophisticated for me. I'm more mixed wildflowers, but what kind of major bee tells someone who just bought her flowers to try again? So I never have. I've tried different ways of giving him the hint, like gushing over the types of flowers that I do like or remarking in the off season <laughs> that I don't like red roses. But those blood red bouquets just keep on a coming. <laughs> 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 Last weekend for Valentine's Day, I was happy and surprised when he walked in with a mixed bouquet of different colored roses. I thought he'd finally learned. But when I said, oh, all the colors are so pretty, he said, yeah, sorry, they were out of red. Oh. <laughs> this is such a first world problem. <laughs> I know. This is, uh, they're really in deep shit, these two. <laughs> in typing this, I realized this, that this was a perfect opportunity to set him straight. But I'm more than 100 bouquets into this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Would telling him now erase nearly 30 years of what truly has been a loving gesture? I know I should suck it up and simply view his cluelessness as cute, but I feel bad letting it continue when that gesture has become sort of a joke to me. Do I fake a new allergy? That's really all I've got right now. Shandy, please help. Amazing. That's such a great That's question. so good. So this makes me think of a story, a cautionary tale okay. that I experienced. Um, I'm sure many other people have experienced the same thing, but I moved into my first apartment when I was 22 mm-hmm. and within the first week there was this older woman. She's probably, in her, I don't know, she's, let's say she was around 70. Okay. And she was my next door neighbor. And, you know, I introduced myself and blah, blah, blah. And after our first conversation, as I was going back into my apartment, I, I heard her say, Nice meeting you, Adam. And I was like, oh, yeah, thanks. And I didn't correct her. Mm -hmm. So for the next 10 years, she called me Adam. Uh And she sometimes would yell Adam down the hallway and I wouldn't know. I I wouldn't respond. And then she'd be like, you know, Adam. I'm like, oh, right, Adam, that's me. Anyway, my point is, is if you don't nip these things in the bud, uh, bud, (laughs) I got that in there. You're, you're done. So you think she's screwed? It's, she's screwed. Just live with the red roses. Yeah. It's, she, she, missed, she missed her opportunity. That boat sailed. <laughs> she's getting red roses till the day she is in the ground. And interestingly, that day will be the only day where it is appropriate to give her red roses. <laughs> Not to be too morbid. Oh 
<laughs> so dark. It was very dark. Sorry. I don't know how it got there. Sorry, Nikki. That was really yeah, dark. Too much. Too much. Too much. I think my opinion on this is going to be pretty obvious. Like, it's it's a, it's a cute question. It's so... It's a great question. It, yeah. It's a great question, but also it, it's about... It's kind of funny. This is a funny example, but there are many other examples mm-hmm. that aren't as funny that are still the same exact problem. Yes. Luckily, she's dealing with one that's more funny than anything else and cute and, and pathetic. It's not like this is going to destroy their yeah, relationship. This, yeah. But, and she recognizes that it's a yeah. silly question, but it's, it's an important question. And I, and I truly believe that if you don't nip these things in the bud, you're going to have it for life. And the only way to do it now is to be literally just be like, listen, I don't like red roses. I don't want you to ever get me red roses again. I love you. I love how cute you are. I love it. I should have been more upfront about this. No more red roses. Uh-huh. That's option B. Well, I think it'll come as no surprise that I think she should do option B. All right. Is that surprising to you? No, oh, no, not at all. I think that this can be a cute thing that they find funny together. Like instead if, of her- if he if he has the backbone and sense of humor to take it, he How may could be. He not. You never know. Maybe I mean she if she is married to him. My guess 30 is thirty years of marriage. She's going to be like, oh, give me a break. <laughs> It's going to be hilarious. It's funny for you. I'm not 100% sure he's going to find it funny. It's a little bit of a risk. It might, he might Put really be Put yourself in his hurt. shoes. 30 years of marriage, you've been getting red roses for every special occasion. Are you really going to be like, oh no? Come on. They're, they're flowers. Wouldn't it be funny if like the next, like the follow up is she got divorced, but she told him to stop giving <laughs> oh her God. red roses. You, you keep going so dark on this one. <laughs> she goes light, I go dark. No, it's it's true. You keep going way darker with this super light question than you do with any. Well, it's any way dark. easier to go dark on a light question than if someone comes with a heavy question. That's I go true. dark. That's just double That's double true. pain for them. So I stand by it. My my cautionary tale of is being called is universal. Don't let these things get out of control. Yeah, but it's too late to tell her that. It's that's more yeah, of but a... I'm saying it's too late. She's stuck. <laughs> She's getting red roses forever. That's it. Okay, so she should be very happy that that's the worst thing she has to it deal is, with. It's a cute problem. Yeah, you know me. I love. I think partnerships are all about just sharing, just about everything. And I feel like if the roles were reversed, she would want to know. She would want to know if she had been getting him. The, something thinking you know she was nailing it every time and he was like secretly like kind of laughing at her (laughs) you know i just think this can be something that they share something that they can laugh about to the point where in the future he can get her red roses as a joke you never know 30 years of marriage this this is just such a tiny thing that that should be a source of of joy together in my opinion yeah or it may end up being, you know, a, a story on the on the late news. You know, it what? could end very badly. So <laughs> could end very badly. So dark. All right, Nikki, you can either take Andy's advice and just deal with your red roses. You made your bed <laughs> of roses. <laughs> huh? and now sleep in it. I, I, yeah, I think you're, you and your husband are partners in life. Let him in on this joke that you already have going and get the flowers you want and just sort of point out red roses together and laugh at it from now on. That's a cute question. It's very cute. Shall we wrap there? Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Dear Shandy. If you liked what you heard today, you can like, subscribe, Follow us on Instagram and you should be following us on Instagram because we have updates there now. Mm -hmm. So if you are curious as to what happens with some of these questions or our caller questions, you can head on over and leave us iTunes reviews, iTunes ratings with the stars and tell your friends and all the things you do to support a little podcast like ours. And on that note, I think we can wrap. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye.